Hi, everybody. My name is Mimi Hapik, and I'm co-founder and project leader of Habibi Works, an intercultural makerspace in the north of Greece, where I have been based for the last five and a half years. I think the very first thing I would want people to consider is the fact that camps as such are an absolutely unacceptable way to accommodate people. We live on one of the, economically speaking, wealthiest continents in the world. It's absolutely not necessary for anybody to live in a tent, in a container, inside a camp. There's infrastructure available. There are so many abandoned buildings available. This is where people should be accommodated as part of the Greek society, visible to their neighbors uh, instead of an, in an isolated camp. And the truth is that the camp, as much as the walls being built around it, is a measure to control people further. And it's a base that allows for further measures of control as well. OK, so you, you mentioned other measures of control. What sorts of things have already been done and what sorts of things might potentially happen, do you think? I think when we look at the, the construction of walls around several refugee camps on the Greek mainland. At the moment, we have to be aware of the fact that this is not an isolated step that the Greek government is taking. Um, since they took over um, in 2019, since they were elected, there have been many measures that go very much in line with building walls around refugee camps right now, from um, make it, um, making it impossible for small international grassroots organizations to access the camps, um, for international observers to, to understand what's going on inside the camps, um, up to shortening the grace period that people have once they do receive a positive decision in their asylum claim. Usually this period was six months. Now it was shortened to four weeks by the new government last year. Um, and this means that people have only four weeks available to find accommodation, their own income, move out of the camp, which obviously is not an encouragement to integrate into the Greek society. It is an encouragement to leave the country. Um, and moreover, we have seen so many illegal pushbacks leading to hundreds of people being um, having their human rights violated, being pushed back illegally. Many people have lost their lives due to this practice. So now the Greek government building walls around camps on the mainland is just one more step in a long line of measures this government has been taking. What do you think that the walls will actually mean for people inside the camps? Perhaps? I think the walls will have an impact on two levels. First of all, obviously, it is a very practical limitation of people's freedom, um, of their possibility to move, to interact with the outside world. Um, it's a limitation also for the outside world to understand what's going on inside the refugee camp. That's true, as I said, for international organizations and observers, but it's also true for the local population. Um, walls allow, like camps allow for walls and walls allow for further measures like curfews, for example. So people's freedom, people's possibilities to spend their day are very practically impacted in a negative way by these walls. But moreover, the walls also send a message on a symbolic level. They very clearly state people in search for freedom and safety are not welcome here. And we will be treating them like criminals, positioning them in a place that more and more looks like a prison. So I think those two levels of impact are both absolutely noteworthy. They're very important for people's like mental health um, for their daily lives, for the way in which they can go about their their uh, errands, their plans, their involvement in the Greek society. And the whole fact that we are investing 28 million euros in building walls instead of into pathways for integration is, is absolutely shameful. Okay, well, we'll come to ideas of integration and social cohesion in a, in a moment, but you've mentioned a couple of times, um, you know, this idea of social cohesion, and um, you have also mentioned, you know, a potential impact of the walls on the Greek community. Do you feel that it's important for Greek people to be able to understand better what's happening in refugee camps and for refugees within those camps to be able to see and meet Greek people in the community? Absolutely. I think the camps as such and the fact that hundreds, if not thousands of people are being isolated and hidden from the rest of society is the absolutely wrong direction. When we look at the overall challenge to integrate hundreds, if not thousands of people into the European societies. So camps as such, as I said, is already the wrong way to go. But building walls around these camps and making it harder for people from the local communities to understand who lives in these camps, what is happening in these camps? like. What, what what is the thing I'm not allowed to see? What is the thing that is being hidden away from me? Um, it's making it so much harder for 
for the Greek society to have an understanding of the circumstances under which refugees and asylum seekers have to live, to identify with them, to empathize with them, to interact with them on a very practical level. Um, so I think these walls have a huge impact, not only on the people living inside the camp, but also on the communities around the camps. You've mentioned um, that the walls will cost around 28 million euros, um, almost all of which, as we understand it, is um, EU funding. Um, clearly, you think that this is the wrong thing for these for this money to be spent on. Um, what do you think would be sensible ways that we could use that money? Very practical things um, that would lead to more integration, to cohesion, to interaction. Um, like, for example, for the longest time that we've been in the north of Greece, there has have been no language classes, Greek language classes offered to the people inside the camp. They were able to access some classes in the university, but the university is far away. Um, so no tailored direct offer has been made to people applying for asylum in a country to learn that country's language. Um, many children, many teenagers have been excluded from formal education for many years, even after arriving in Greece. Um, there is a lack of vocational training. There is a lack of integration into the labor market. And all these things would, in the end, not only benefit the asylum seekers and refugees that are motivated to generate an income, that are so keen to, to invest in their lives and their futures, it would also benefit the Greek society. It would benefit the Greek economy, um, the infrastructure. So I I really think that Europe, that Greece is massively shooting themselves in the foot by excluding all these people and now building walls around camps instead of investing money um, into structures that allow people to, to unfold their full potential and to participate and contribute to the Greek society. Thank you very much, Mimi. Thank you.